everyone. Hey, everyone. So here we are. We're going live. We are live. Yeah. So how's everyone doing in this most glorious, auspicious time? You know, it, it truly is. Uh, let's just say in despite of everything what is occurring it's all occurring for very good reasons so you know there's lots of energies coming in and many are speaking about uh, ascension symptoms feeling the energies and all of this is very real and you know every day is more or less a um, jam-packed a day of uh, reports, observations, uh, feelings, experiences, and uh, you know one thing, everything is expediting as well, and uh, with the individual experiences, because we are uh, very rapidly upward shifting all the time, and, and with that you know, any unfinished negative business, any tests, uh, they will come up because you have to master them. And uh, if and you master them by, of course, making the right choices. So it's always so important, important to make the right choice, and the right choice is to stay in the highest truth, your highest purity, and, of course, integrity, and... Um, you know, it can be even not detrimental, but it can be hindering even with a, a white lie or, you know, the slip of the mouth. So you also need to be so conscientious and meticulous at what you say in these times. And it's, uh, you know, something if it does slip out, yes, correct it immediately. Uh, it, it is so important. So much in the world is uh, transpiring as we see, and of course it all needs to happen. And uh, the tension is building and building on the lower timelines. And although we are part of that as well, um, you know you c that we uh, exist in a duality where Yes, you are here on the lower timeline, but uh, your experiences depends upon the individual is, is not as uh, dense and as harsh as some. And uh, these experiences must occur, and uh, it, it's all part of the divine plan, of course, to assist in your individual mastery. And, it's the mastery of the energy for where we're going. So we're going to a place of purity, and there is the process within each of the individuals to get there. And you must change your ways to be aligned with the purity. And the quicker you do that, uh, the quicker you get there. And it's all about togetherness as well. This is the thing. Uh, one can advance incredibly forward in their crystalline process and in their enlightenment and embodiment process. However, for the most part, uh, they are kept here because you have uh, a mission to fulfill. And uh, also, we cannot all go forward until the rest of our uh, divine comrades emerge out of the lower timeline, the lower experience, then we go forward together, and that process is ongoing in, in every moment. It's a, a total divine orchestration. It is a divine plan, and, uh, you know, there is uh, what you could say, really, when ones look at uh, free will, that is not really the case. You know, it's good to uh, have free will of choice, but you will also find that your choices are restricted, especially uh, when you want to leave the scene and, and you're not, let's say, allowed. It doesn't occur. But, uh, of course, that's in rare, um, rare cases that, you know, one really wants to get out of it. But it does happen.
But without going into that, uh, the sun is setting up uh, once again with a lot of beautiful uh, influxes, infusions of uh, different types of light uh, for different divine uh, purposes. And uh, so that is being given to the planet uh, uh, in very appreciable amounts. And uh, just a few days ago I'd mentioned uh, we had to anchor in the white light again. And what I wish to say is uh, uh, at that time I didn't uh, until the following day and there were other reasons for that. However, what I wish to say is that my observations was, uh, yeah, I could see it coming in even where we were at here. And of course, all of your endeavors, divine endeavors and energetic work, it is always uh, successful. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit dry tobacco, so that's a cigarette cough. How are we running here? Is it um, glitching again? Okay. Well, I have the strongest internet here, so it should be good. Okay, I'm going to continue because I don't believe it's glitching much uh, for many now. Just to show you got a good, um, a good signal for your Wi-Fi where you're at, and hopefully it. Uh, should be okay. So how are we running now? Yeah, Craig Miller says it's good. Yeah, great. Uh, so having said this, yes, of course, a, a lot is going on, and <clears throat> it will, <clears throat> it will, and it needs to become more uh, dense. So everyone is prepared for that. I, I cannot give you the extents of how dense it will come or it will be, but there will be some more density because it has to, again, to <clears throat> awaken and give the incentive uh, to the others to stand more in their power because everyone needs to understand that we are transitioning uh, the entire human society. And to do that, you need the support uh, of the people to do it. <clears throat> and to guarantee that that support is here to transition humanity forward, you can see what has been occurring in the last two years. And it's not to look at it as a negative thing, it's to look at it as a fully positive thing with it. And, uh, and it is serving uh, its great purpose. There is a separation going on, a segregation, and it is from the light, from the dark, and it is, and the darkness cannot go forward, and having said this at this time, I will reiterate the importance of wise love, which is the next step above unconditional love, and this is very important. So, essentially, in the beginning of your uh, divine empowerment and advancement, you're taught to have unconditional love. You're, you're taught to exercise it, know what it is, and, you know, part of that unconditional love, you were told to uh, love the darkness, uh, thank them, and... Uh, Forgive them, if you will. Uh, and that is fine, because that's part of the process to get you up here to using, utilizing unconditional love, knowing the importance of it, knowing the energetic values of it to get you up here. But once you get up here, it doesn't stop. We are going further forward. So once you get up here with unconditional love, and you have at least that balance. We are going beyond that. And to go beyond unconditional love to the wise love and also to clean the reality 
that was here to clean it up here and purify it, the dark cannot go. Now, as you all know, part of this process that when you come into that complete unconditional love that you begin to manifest, you begin to co-create at a very powerful and even instantaneous rate. And if we need to look at the act of forgiveness, so the act of forgiveness and the act of love, if you're doing this to darkness, once you reach a high level of co-creation ability and manifesting, once you reach that level where there's still darkness in the world, the actual conscious darkness, when you love them and when you forgive them, that means you accept them. You keep them in your reality by sending love to them by keeping them energized, by recognizing them in your reality. And by forgiving, there is a certain degree of acceptance and a condonance. And by doing that, also, you are energizing and keeping them in your reality. So you need to use your prudence. You need to use your discernment. You need to be disciplined as well on the individual level with yourself and what you're doing. You need to be very conscientious and very meticulous with it once you have reached that level of wisdom, that level of wise love. And what you will find by doing this and by what I just said, each one of you can prove it and confirm it to yourself. I speak freely, I need no validation of my words, for I know they're true. However, each one of you may need it. And if you do, let's say, test what I say, it's one of the best ways. And as many of you know, part of my teaching is this. I may say something that is far out there, but what I'll say is do the opposite. Then very quickly you find out, then you're on board and you're going ahead. So, you know, if something doesn't resonate with you, do the opposite. Or if you have any doubt, do the opposite and test it, analyze it, and watch what happens. Then very quickly you have it imprinted within your working humanoid consciousness here that you remember it and that you know it. For we know with the human consciousness that part of it that for the most part you need to actually see or experience something. Then it gets imprinted, it gets ingrained within you and then you come to know it as a truth at least to guide you forward. So it's better to instill that knowing is by proving it to the logical part of your consciousness, what you have. And by doing that, of course, you keep stepping up the ladder. And that's what this ascension is all about. So we're taking humanity forward. Humanity now, for the most part, most of you that's watching this is perhaps in at least some level of super consciousness. So the human is evolving and uh, the higher states of consciousness is very true and it's setting up, you know. Uh, I, no, I'd like to say we're amidst <clears throat> of the quantum, um, quantum consciousness shift right at this time uh, because truly we are, and you know, there's so many at different levels of, of going through that process, but Many are already there, uh, you know, to very high conscious, uh, super consciousness levels as well with your abilities. I'll just uh, double check and see how we're doing. Strong signal. Thank you, Constance. And Carolyn, yeah, Lainey or Roberts, we'll have a chat uh, later. Uh, we were supposed to have an engagement uh, 
on a chat, and we'll do that later. I just see you. It's great to see you here. You know, at this point, I've been rambling on for about 15 minutes, so any questions uh, on any energetics, anything currently happening, just uh, go ahead and put them in the comments, if you will. And uh, I'll just keep speaking, rambling on until I see a question. Um, it's great to see all of you are doing well, and of course, much love and light and greetings to you all. So also what we're doing, and yeah, I, I got to mention GPMS in here because it is uh, the divine plan and it is the deliverance for humanity out of the savagery. So uh, just a quick thing on that. It is going absolutely well. Uh, so I can use it as a gauge as well, where we're seeing more of a fanning out, more of the growth and construction of that. What that also means is that the lower is imploding more and that more are getting aligned with the new reality, with the higher timeline. So it is happening and it's great uh, to be witnessing that, <coughs> especially in the last uh, last couple of weeks, I'm, I'm seeing a very appreciable and incredible growth in alignment with the new timeline. And having said this, all of the other, uh, let's say, belief threads that are out there, uh, what I love seeing is when they put the concrete dates on there and nothing happens. And with this, it, it needs to be uh, they need to implode to get ones aligned with the higher timelines, but uh, and that process is happening now. So when there are dates put out there that something is going to occur and it doesn't, you know, it's immediate letdown for those ones because there's a high degree of expectation built in. However, there are these themes and beliefs that are out there there is trickery and misconception that is put in there. But again, the ones have to go in it to have the experience to see it fail time and time again. Some only need to be uh, one of the old sayings, fool me once, uh, shame on me, but fool me uh, twice, shame on you, you know. And uh, So how many times really does one need to be fooled? So. Everyone knows what I'm getting at with this. But everything does serve a purpose, and it's all part of going forward. But we are in such a very important, crucial time that everything needs to be streamlined to the convergence now. So this means a lot of beliefs, a lot of ones you were following, a lot of things, that that is all destructing very rapidly because there has to be this forward alignment with the ultimate deliverance for humanity and also the ascension. It is the mission that we came here to do. That's why all of you have been going through all of these tests and also retrieving your divine wisdom, your divine knowledge. It's not by chance. The Great Awakening, everyone knows what that is for, and that's not to be anything of the old. It's the deliverance from the evil, from the darkness, and they cannot go forward again. So anything that is with that, with that old power regime, the old paradigm, the old control over the individuals, it doesn't go forward. This takes the community of the world, the worldwide peoples as the community, the unity that does it with everyone equal and working in harmony and no wealth disparity and no inequality and all of these things. Having said this, you know, there's many twin flame pairs uh, upon the planet, more every day. There's not a set number on twin flame pairs and uh, they are the examples of the new relationships as well as uh, the human experience takes on 
an unprecedented higher level of energetics. And uh, so these are all divinely occurring. It, it's divinely assured, and it is nothing stops it. This is written, and for what we are and for what uh, Creator is, it's, it is omnipotent, invincible. The darkness is only here in one lower dimension. We are multi-dimensional. They are shut off from going anywhere. The darkness are quarantined. We are multi-dimensional. We never die, and we are powerful over all of the darkness. We are the superior force in the universe. The ultimate human souls of light connected straight to Creator. That is the omnipotent power the darkness were uh, masters of illusion, masters of trickery. Uh, and I say they were because the new masters are all of you that are upon the planet, that are enlightened and endowed and embodied with your divine power. You know your creation abilities at manifesting little things, but... Uh, the stronger you become, we all manifest and create as a whole. And the darkness cannot do that. They used to trick you into creating for them because they cannot create their self. They used you and your abilities to create for them by the false narratives. And these are their tactics that they continue with today because the darkness is very afraid and out of their desperation, you see more and more of their fear tactics. But what's occurring, because your discernment features are becoming stronger and stronger, you see right through every bit of it. And this also shows you that they have no power whatsoever. None of you would be here today. I would not be here today. Uh, the last linear decade of all of the... Uh, documentation and evidence put out there never would have occurred. If the darkness had any power, they would have had it all concealed. So it shows you that they have none. And uh, very frantically and desperately, you know, they are holding on, um, uh, holding on to attempting at controlling, but it's having the opposite good effect for us. And it it is also at the higher levels orchestrated to do that as well. So it depends on what perspective you're coming from. Uh, from one perspective, you can look at everything as a movie and, you know, be responsible to play your roles when it comes. Or uh, from another lower level, you'll know that you're responsible uh, to get uh, your inner work done and prepare uh, yourself to go forward. And uh, what many of you will find is that uh, once you begin to practice what I call the divine virtues, which is the absolute uh, purity of all of your actions and reactions, and once you ma maintain that, uh, that is infused with gratitude and love, two of the highest uh, in integrity, of course, you know, let's say, three of the highest uh, divine virtues, then you will see your reality will reflect that. And you also have your higher experiences because you are energizing your space with that sort of purity. And uh, you will see more of the miracles and, and more of the magic. So it is important to uh, eradicate as much of the negativity as you can. Now, you'll still, it's still okay to have a little bit of negativity within you because it does serve a purpose. However, you need to be conscientious that it does come the time that you keep it even more pure, that you do purify it more. So by being the empath and feeling the energy, you need to do that. It's for a very important divine reason that you do. And you can also say it's a part of a grounding feature as well uh, to keep you into this reality. 
because uh, your multidimensional abilities are becoming stronger, being prepared and set up uh, for the transcending or um, your multidimensional abilities at going into other dimensions with these physical vessels intact. So to maintain this level of vibration, some of you uh, still have some grounding features that you use, your ability uh, to feel negativity, to transmute it, and and what have you. It varies to the individual, to their tools that they will use. And uh, having said that once again, everyone's experience is unique, and it's important, yes, not to judge uh, another as well, and, and to know that everyone is doing their best and uh, that just because they're doing something you're not doing or they might use another tool that you don't, it, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. You need to know this uh, because each one at a soul level cho chose their tools, what they would utilize. So uh, the main thing is to uh, be conscientious of yourself to advance it forward into the highest state possible at any given time. But there is also levels with that uh, to assure that uh, a lot of you don't vibrate out of this reality. So there are measures that are, uh, let's say, at least above your own power at this time because there is a divine plan occurring upon the planet. As I mentioned before, there is a mission, and uh, a lot of you are not allowed to leave. I include it, I will say, and I know this. So, and this is one of the reasons why I divinely work, if you will, from the time I get up until I go to bed every night, and that is to get uh, the mission completed as soon as possible. And I know many of you wish that as well, so we all do our best at, at doing that because we know the rewards come uh, once the mission is completed, and these rewards are beyond anything ever known uh, to humanity because, we, again, we are in unprecedented times. And when you look at the multidimensional aspect, uh, then, you know, you can see where the rewards come from. The more that uh, you purify yourself, your actions and your reactions, and do your inner work, um, the more your Merkaba, your light body, your Kundalini, uh, the more it activates uh, uh, your, your physical vessel, in your energetic vessel, and the more it propels you forward. So it is very important to do that. And it's also important to take care of your physical vessels, what you're putting in them. And uh, if that was not so, all of you would not have been doing this. You would not have been taught uh, to do all of this if it wasn't important. So it is very important. Keep your vessels as clean as possible, what each one of you is guided to do with that. I'll see if there's any questions here now. <coughs> Uh, Manny says, according to Jesse Ventura, there's no one at the helm. Well, uh, I have to say I agree with that because with, when you're speaking about the darkness, yes, there isn't. They're all in disarray, and they have been, uh, you know, just trying to keep the script and to maintain, maintain the control script. And out of their desperation, yes, they are all in uh, disarray. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I confirm that as well. Thank you. 
just reading a couple comments there and just see if there is uh, any questions. Uh, Louise Marie. Uh, you know, with the power outages and uh, tribunals and, and these sort of things, what I need to say that there is a good element, uh, military and police-wise, uh, upon the planet with the people. However, it is this element is not as organized as what you may think that you can depend upon it. And this is one of the reasons with GPMS and why we are collecting the worldwide voice. Because, in fact, the militaries, the good military and the good police, cannot act unless they get the orders directly from the people. So, you know, there's some dates they put on this, uh, but it's kind of, you need to use your discernment at weeding out what is truth and what is not. Now, without power, electricity, and internet, you're asking, is this so? It may very well be an outage between five days and two weeks is what I'm given if this needs to occur, and it could be planet-wide. But there's also a couple other possibilities which may have to come in here. Uh, if it needs to be done, it will be. One of the possibilities is uh, shutting down the internet and all of the digital banking, um, just to show some of these that may felt that they were in good places of wealth. Uh, and when they come to see, when the lights come back on, that their digital account is at zero then they'll see how fragile their existence really is. And if divinely that's what it takes to get these ones to move in alignment, if the number of them is great, then that's what will divinely occur. So there is, let's say there is possibilities, but everyone needs to realize as well, uh, upon the planet, and with this whole ascension, there is also off-world assistance that is here. And I know many of you have seen the ships in the sky, and yes, it is very real, because this entire planetary ascension is so important, and you can say all of the leagues of the universe are here to assist with this. And it's assured that it does go forward. And I will say several times now, wars were prevented by an outside off-world source. And with that is the guarantee that this ascension goes forward. But there still needs to be a little bit of chaos, as we said, to awaken the others. Um, so, some, uh, I don't know if I answered all that fully, but I started to ramble. But... Let's say there are possibilities. If it needs to occur, there will be that power outage, yes, and internet. And uh, everyone has also uh, been told to have perhaps a couple weeks of food, if you will, you know, always there uh, on stock within your house. This is a good idea. And, of course, many, all you need is, is water. You don't really need food for the ones that are advanced forward uh, so much. So you're all okay, anyhow, with that. But it depends upon the individual. Follow your guidance. If you feel to have some supplies, don't question it. Just do it. Trust your intuition because it is yours. Don't trust what anyone else says. It trust your own and your connection to Creator. Yeah, Tanya, and hi Tanya Rasmussen uh, from Denmark, and uh, we have met uh, her, Femke and I. It's good to see you, Tanya. Yeah, the energy I see you mention is uh, changing. 
uh, well, it's all lit up and energized there for Denmark, in meaning that anything that was not compatible with going forward, uh, it was set into motion that it has to implode if it was not in alignment. So you may feel some discord uh, during that creational process of dissolving the old so it gets in alignment uh, with the new there. And as we said when we were there, Denmark is so important. And I had anticipated why we were there that it could have been uh, the spark right there and then in Denmark uh, to uh, do this quick world transition. <coughs> However, what we're seeing, it, it's uh, uh, taking a little bit longer, but we're, we're all going forward, but it's taking a little bit longer than uh, what we anticipated or what I anticipated. And you know, speaking this as a, as, as a powerful creator, I need to always create in the now moment. So, uh, for example, uh, to keep GPMS uh, fully energized, I need to say it is instant, it's imminent. We need to say this in the now to make it in the now. If, if I was to say uh, GPMS, if I kept saying GPMS is going to come to fruition in a month, Look what I'm creating when I say that. And if I say that every day, another month, then I am creating a transitional thing rather than creating it in the now. So sometimes my choice of words will be like this, and it's for very important reasons, because the more that we speak from that creator now moment to say, no, it's now, then we bring it to the now. If not, you keep pushing it forward. So that's important to be conscientious of that ability as well. Thank you. <coughs> Ashley says, I need to more about the military connection. That is where uh, her uh, twin is well with the military each one within the police forces and the military uh, the souls of light if you will what you see is they're departing from supporting the government and this is a divine um, process that's occurring because they can no longer be supporting the darkness if you will so you're seeing them split off but they're not splitting off individually is the beauty of it. So as they're not supporting the government over here, they're getting all organized over here as well. So as they separate uh, from the governments and supporting that, that is getting smaller and smaller while this is getting bigger and bigger. So there's an interesting process going on there with it as well. And of course the best side is the the side of the light for any police, any army, or no matter what you're doing. You know, I put out several months ago for anyone in any government jobs even to leave those jobs. But again, uh, it's everyone's choice what they do, and I just put out uh, the suggestion and the best thing of what to do and a little bit of divine justification and reasoning uh, behind it or with it, I should say, and then it becomes uh, more easier and more clear for one to make the choice and to, uh, you know, use their discernment and also in some cases to get their confirmation on what they felt in their intuition to do. And having said that, I've spoke and Femke and I we have spoken with ones that, you know, they, they ask what to do, get the jab or, or, or leave the job. And, well, you know what we always say, and what I always say, leave the job. You don't want to put that toxin in your body. And, you know, it depends upon an individual basis. There may be someone, you know, they just ask for an opinion, and, 
and we give it, but the choice is theirs, what they, what they wish to do. However, we must speak our truth, and, and I always do with that. So whoever goes forward, goes forward. It's, it's really at the soul's uh, choice on what they do, but again, uh, there is about six billion souls upon the planet that goes, human souls that goes forward. And uh, there are very few uh, in numbers that, let's say, are ascending through the death process. So, you know, there's, uh, let's say, some of you may know ones, their contribution to the mission in the ascension here has been completed. So they ascend through the death process, but there's not very many that is doing that. When you look at uh, all of the star seeds in the children, the crystalline children, rainbow, indigos, everything is all set up for the new advanced human uh, experience as well and they're all here for the generations to take humanity forward and of course the what you could call first contact with ETs if you will whatever way you want to say or the galactics that is right around the corner and that can happen in the blink of an eye and I will not put any date on it other than saying that can happen at any time as well as uh, any of the other good things because we are that close. We're right on the doorstep of step, stepping uh, through into the more higher dimensional uh, reality here. But of course, as you see, there's that level of destruction that must occur and we're amidst that. And uh, one of the things that that we are also doing with GPMS to, to limit the amount of chaos and uh, tension out there. Uh, this is also why we are putting GPMS out there because it does assist ones, let's say especially the protesters, when they know that there is a real direction, that it's here, that this is what, let's say, they were fighting for. So it's all prepared for them. So when they know that, then it's not as much uh, fight for your life down here, that it's more unity instead of fighting. And so when the part of that focus is directed towards the unity, part of that stress is left up, lifted up off of them, especially the protesters, then you don't get so much of a heavy chaotic confrontation. So it's important <coughs> to build uh, the GPMS because that is the full deliverance. So this is why most of my focus and others we've been, and Lee brother, Lee Mudway, uh, uh, brother <laughs> into GPMS, which I love so much as well, we're putting, all, devoting all of our time, more or less, the last few weeks in, in keeping this energized, GPMS, getting it out there because, uh, again, it alleviates the chaos on the, the lower timeline. So we're doing this uh, transitioning things as ones become awakened and enough that they can see GPMS, then they become more aligned with that and it eases the tension, especially now where it's getting so tense. So, uh, just having a look in here. I see Ashley saying something that she had an experience with a figure known as Father Melchizedek and uh, she heard he was bad and evil but she doesn't feel that. Y you know, Ashley, with this, uh, what you need to look at is what you feel. Um, 
especially any of you that have your um, Merkaba activated, that could feel in your heart, this is your discernment feature. So if you have an experience with, uh, let's say, some sort of a projected imposter, if you don't feel it in your heart and you don't feel the love, you know it's not genuine. So you can use that. And of course, use your discernment out there with some of the trickery that was there. But the trickery is lessening. And at this time, you also need to recognize that your soul, if it needs to, will set up a fearful event for you, uh, for you to master it. And one of the greatest things is to master the fear. So it could be a subjugation of your soul that set up this experience for to test you and to master you. And this is important for all to know that everything is a test. And it's to master the fear in your physical form, in the human form, because it's so important within your energetic field. Fear is a density. It's not compatible with purity in your multidimensional process. So it has to go. And you are tested on many levels with all aspects of fear, impatience, frustrations, anger, uh, sympathy, worry. All of these are fears. And, you know, to whatever degree that it's holding you back or hindering you, then you'll be subjugated with the test to overcome these. So. Uh, t without getting too deep into that. So that's what it's about. Uh, Carolyn says, order comes from chaos. Yes, it does in this case. And having said that, for, you know, many of you, if not all of you, this will be, uh, once we get through this chaos, this will be the last chaos for humanity. But we have to go there uh, to physically integrate and establish into the reality the harmony so the old has to be destructed which is doing it's very beautiful uh, to see this occurring it's destructing very rapidly and it is not part of the new so yes Yeah, thank you for that, Tanya. Anyone where it's saying it's jumping or glitching when I'm speaking on the replay, usually it's uh, pretty, pretty good, so you can watch it later. And someone will usually, uh, Rick Vornbrook, brother, he usually um, downloads these and puts them on YouTube later, so, and there may be a couple others that does that as well so if you don't uh, see it or if you're having problems with it here now you can watch it uh, later perhaps so Mary Cambasso said she's seeing red and blue flashing lights in the same positions uh, you were saying these are planets, and if they're government-owned, what are they? Do you know? I can't find. Uh, Mary, what these are, are these Mer these are Merkava ships, and you will see that at given times that they flash what we call the seven uh, sacred rays, uh, the seven chakras, the seven colors of the rainbow. So it depends upon what is occurring upon the planet, what they are flashing, what colors, and sometimes you can see them very active. So these are actually Merkava ships, and for the most part, um, you can see between four and approximately 12 of these huge ships uh, each night. It depends if you're on a hill that you can... Uh, see 360 degrees, you will most likely uh, can see 12. But there is four uh, that are always here, uh, to my knowledge, over the last 10 years, that you always can see the four 
and the cardinal points of the compass, they are not right on the cardinal points, they're a little bit uh, delineated from it, but you will see like one in the east, one in the west, one in the north, one in the south, or in those directions. So these are Merkava ships. Uh, they will move when you watch them. You can interact with them. And the more that you interact with them, uh, the more communication as well. And also you may have saw online that uh, uh, we have others, you know, that have zoomed in on these Merkava ships. And uh, when you zoom in on them, sometimes they'll give you on a screen different uh, things, maybe some light language, uh, heart shapes, they'll turn into fish, uh, uh, pyramid shapes, and uh, a, a lot of cool things occur with them. But also they will, these Merkava ships at times, will project, boom, a big beam of light right down towards you as well. So they are Merkava ships and they assist with uh, your crystalline process, your advancement and giving you confirmations, you know, that there is something else also that's am amicable, uh, that's friendly, that's assisting you and uh, along your journey and you can feel the uplifted vibration and the excitement. And of course, every time your vibration goes higher, it's, it's assisting um, the crystalline change. And when we look at the numbers, like uh, the repetitive numbers, like 1111, these sort of things are very important. As you know, they're not by chance. You may call them synchronicities, but uh, they, they mean more than just being the numbers and just by chance. So one thing that they do do, what's very important, is, is they keep you alert when you see them, but they also raise your vibration because you're seeing them against astronomical odds. So it's also inviting you more deeper in to know that there is more of an organization within reality, that it's not running random, that there is more of an order with it as well. So it serves many purposes. Thank you. Okay, just looking for a few more questions. And I won't keep this one so long. <laughs> Uh, Joanna Childs asks, does the test have the same toxins as the jab? Uh, let me just say, it depends. Some tests did have some sort of toxins on them, and, and it could very well be so. I will not distinguish with that because uh, it, it could very well, and I really don't have any uh, substantial evidence on that other than uh, yeah, I, I have a strong feeling that it, it could have been as well. So don't take the tests. And you know what Father said in the beginning, uh, before any vaccinations come out, uh, everyone was told from Father Creator the suggestion. I put the post out, and uh, more than once, I believe, do not take any vaccines, and there was a reason for that. So those that shouldn't have, they didn't for the most part, but also with the test, um, it was also said in the beginning, because you didn't want to give your DNA away early in the beginning, uh, especially if you were an older one. Now, if you were just a child, it did not really matter to give away the DNA because when the child was born in a hospital, if they were born in a hospital, uh, you know, one of the first things that the hospitals did was take a blood sample. And they're not only looking for the blood type, they were looking for the crystalline component within the plasma of the child and especially the 
star seeds and crystalline children born today uh, in their plasma of their blood is that advanced crystalline component uh, that that they were looking for as well to see but that goes off into um, uh, you probably could begin to yeah, speak paragraphs on that which I won't now I'm getting a little bit off track not off track on track but I'm just rambling <laughs> Uh, Silver Brook asks, when you say first contact, would you mind specifying which ones are here for benevolent intentions? Okay, with that, with first contact, legitimate first contact, they are all benevolent. Uh, with any projection, fake or mock first contact, it, it'll be, if it even Occurs, which I don't think at this time it was one of their plans that they had but they could not even do that so I don't even say that is part of a possibility anymore but let me say any contact yes is benevolent because what has occurred all of the malevolent uh, ETs if you will are also quarantined and they are now fully submit it and subjugate it to universal law which means they cannot interfere with any of this ascension process and uh, they know that and also they are quarantined to the fourth dimensional space so everything is set up for benevolence with it so all of the any um, first contact is it's all benevolent for that's what we are the only what you need to also understand is that the nefarious malevolent ETs that they are in a fourth dimension they came from fourth dimension other planets if you will but what we are doing is taking humanity into the fifth dimension if you wish to envision it this way where all the planets and the other life forms are all harmonious and friendly and benevolent of course so this is how you need to one way that you would like to envision it to look at it why this is so so where we're going with that first contact once a vibration of Terra Gaia herself has reached that we're able to enter that dimensional space or even come very close we're very close to it now like she's fluctuating but then you enter where there's only benevolent ones so we're leaving behind the uh, the lower density See, because again you need to look at everything is energy and you need to look at um, what fear is and aggression or deception or malevolence is fear its density so this also means that any malevolent ET cannot exist in 5d and beyond it's only benevolent up there this is why each of you is going through your purity because you're going to the purified um, a fifth dimensional state and anything malevolent, ETs included, cannot go there. For simple physics will dictate why they cannot, because you cannot have anything negative and dense and fear exist in an environment where it doesn't exist. It, it repels it. So this is also another reason why they stay behind in the fourth dimension because their physics physics or even energy will not allow it to be and I can go a little bit deeper with this this is also with you know their dimensional portals what they had which are not actually dimensional portals they were just interdimensional portals within the one dimension they were not going into the fifth the twelfth dimension they were just accessing um, 
they were transporting within the one dimension is where they were at. So the same as the malevolent ETs, the Dracos, the reptilians, they all come from the fourth dimension. They did not come from the fifth or anything above where we're going because they cannot exist up there. It's, it's because of what they are. So thank you for that excellent question. I won't go ramble too much more than that. Okay, I'll look, see if there's another question or two, and I'll keep this uh, short. Uh, Amina asks, are there multiple planets going through this process at the same time? Uh, that's an excellent question. You know, Amina, it, it, it may be, and I cannot answer that, but where you brought this up, it, it's very possible. Yeah, within the fourth dimensional space going forward, you know, another planet. It, there can be. So I won't rule that out uh, unless I'm given something uh, from Father or some other information that says that. So, yeah, I love that. that that's an interesting... I never thought of that and was never given that before, so... Thank you, in this incarnation, anyway. Uh, Zika, on the 8th, saw a plane very low in black. I don't know what that means. Uh, what I need to say is there just today, yeah, tonight again, um, I saw a partially cloaked ship, and if they're not, if they're partially cloaked, it depends on what time of day you see them, that they could look black as well, and they're transparent. It depends on how much they are cloaked. Uh, but also, I need to say this, that uh, uh, the Galactics are very ingenious, that uh, they can also make their ships look like planes at times. So. Everything you're seeing in the sky that looks like a plane is not a plane either. They can take on any shape, form, or size because there is no space nor time for us. So you could have a huge ship uh, with a planet inside that's maybe only that big uh, because we have the full capacity and ability um, to... Lee would know the word I'm looking for, but uh, space does not restrict us. We can collapse it and still within that space have a, a whole uh, galaxy, if you will. But uh, that goes a little bit deeper into some things. So I learn asks, um, what about a holographic false invasion? She says they hear much about yet. As I said, that was one of the plans and agendas of the darkness. But as far as I know, any holographic invasion has been thwarted. Um, one of the reasons why it has, it was part of their plan, but where it was released, uh, um, you know, many are conscientious of it if it even did begin. And I remember several years ago, so what we were putting out uh, to thwart that and in preparation uh, at that time that uh, any, any first contact would be benevolent anyway. So if you saw something that was coming, um, uh, blowing up places or look like a bush, you knew that that was from the planet, that it wasn't uh, uh, from off-world uh, or, let's say, other multi-dimensional or other dimensional. So that has been uh, thwarted to my degree, to my knowledge, yes. I, I believe it's a, 
erased read out of uh, any of the timeline possibilities at this time. Thank you. Silver Brook asks, Rick, do you support a person requesting their own recontact or first contact individually? Uh, it, having said that, in the past, I've assisted uh, ones where, uh, let's say, had to change their perspective on they were ready for their consciousness to change the perspective to see what was actually occurring. Because in some of the benevolent uh, individual contacts, what occurs is that when ones did not get rid of the fear fully, if they went into fear mode, they would cut off the contact, but they would also be disillusioned to what was occurring. So in the past, I did assist ones with that. And you say, and does wearing a Merkaba really create personal protection? Well, the Merkaba that I speak of is your energetic, is your chakras, and it's your energetic uh, vessel, is your Merkaba, that is your multidimensional vessel, it is your light body, that is within your energy and within your physical body to take your energy and your physical vessel into the other dimensions. Now, you're, you're asking, does it create a personal protection? Well, your Merkaba, the thing is, your Merkaba, if you think you need to be protected, then your Merkaba shuts down. So the trick is, there is nothing to be protected about, then by doing that and trusting and knowing that, your Merkaba then becomes uh, much more powerful, activated, uh, lights all turned on. Then it does create the protection. There is nothing ever really to harm you is what you need to understand, that there is nothing to harm. But if you feel you need to be protected, then you can create things that you think you need to protect from. So the ultimate trick is, when you're advanced like this with your Merkaba, don't think you need to protect yourself because that is coming from a state of fear. So you've got to go in and you've got to say, no, I trust fully, I know what's going on, there is nothing to be afraid of. And when you fill that place with the, uh, the divine virtue of trust in what you are in Creator and what's going on upon the planet, then you do create a, a, a protective field. I, I can say it in that way, but you don't need to look at protection from a fear state. It, it happens automatically, if you will. Now, uh, Mina asks, Rick, will the children heal who have been terribly abused in tunnels? You know, with that, I'd put that on an individual basis with the children, but I will also, I need to add another element in here, that not all of the children that were in these labs and in the tunnels have human souls as well. You need to understand that there were many genetics labs and also in vitro labs. And without getting too deep into that, uh, there was what you would call a lot of scripted consciousness and clones, uh, very real, but they do not have the soul. They are not connected that they can transition uh, the DNA in the human vessel. So you need to be conscientious enough to know that not all uh, these children did have, uh, let's say, souls and were not ascending as well. So without getting into any numbers with it, uh, it, it depends on the individual case what occurs. And when you get deeper in 
uh, to the soul's experience. That's why in this case you need to uh, entertain the idea that the souls since 2015 can also change the soul's contract in the now while, while awake to certain degrees. So it could also be that, uh, let's say if you had a seven-year-old child uh, that was a human soul that died, well, they might have wanted to leave that body behind to be reborn very quickly again in this most glorious time into uh, another child. So there's so many different variables with this that I, I don't wish to distinguish uh, and to comment much more on that. Thank you. Uh, Lauren Robinson, will there be a new education system put in place or will it be up to the parents? You know, the new the new education, it, it's, it's not going to be like the public schools and all of that anymore. And what I'd like to say, I don't want to put any restrictions on that, but what I do know when I look at some children and parents that, you know, it's what the children want to learn and it's what the parents want to learn them. So I don't put any restrictions on that and, and that evolves the way that it needs to be. So you just uh, let things uh, let things evolve and be created in the now, especially with the children. One thing I can say that everyone knows the mystic schools are coming back to learn about the child's energetic empowerment as well. Because you need to look at many of these children born today, they are very advanced in their energetic abilities, uh, they're ingenious, uh, uh, their telepathic abilities, their parapsychological abilities. They can read minds and um, they can channel and, and so many things. So you don't want to restrict the children. And let's, you know, some wants to go to uh, a wizard school, you know, or, or a mystic school, and some others might be interested in some technology. Don't restrict them and let that be up on a individual family basis with it. But what I, one thing I can say is that, yeah, your old education system, public school system, university, college, you know, that, uh, 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 that, that slavery to be conditioned into the old society is not going to be there. Yes, so you can say that no longer is going to be uh, perhaps 20 years of enslavement for the children. You don't need that. You don't need a piece of paper uh, to say what you are or what your qualifications are or what your abilities are. And it's not going to be that kind of a world uh, where all of you, all of us are immediately going into. So thank you. Mary asks, can one twin flame be unconscious and the other be awake? Uh, yeah, th there can be, but also, Mary, there is not a definite set of twin flames, meaning that, you know, more of the relationships going forward are going to be more twin flame oriented because they're going to be based on the love in the energetics. And you're going to see the family units, if you will, uh, are going to be much higher family units and a higher uh, relationships with energy into um, uh, the family units. So they're going to be and are already much different. Uh, so, you know, there can be at this time, yes, we do have ones that are not awakened yet that uh, can be... Um, activated very quickly and yes uh, so and, and they can come online so you're saying like uh, uh, if you're awake 
but you're thinking your twin flame is not awake yet. Yes, this, it's perfectly normal to happen in this time. Four, if we had all of ours in the new reality um, right now, if we were all in there, in that new reality right now, everyone that uh, heard or was aware of the twin flame concept, they'd be with them. So anyone that's heard of it does have uh, at least a divine counterpart. And you say, what does this mean for the pair when one is waiting for the other? Well, the thing is, no one is really to wait if you're individual and if you are unpaired, unmatched, if you will. The main thing is for you to keep going ahead in your empowerment and uh, keep working upon yourself. Because by you doing that uh, inadvertently, uh, your partner, if they're still asleep, they'll be forced to awaken. So you're more benefit to your partner when you keep empowering yourself because you need to understand as well that there is um, the distance in energetic value between you two. It can only stretch so far, and then he'll have to come forward, if you will. Um, so that is why it's best, and it, and it has been the Divine Feminine keep going forward in their empowerment. And, you know, when the masculine needs to come into your awareness and into union, it does occur, and it happens better that way. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, with the children, it says, uh, yeah, no system will be imposed. Yeah, thank you. And uh, a free. Yeah, just a. <laughs> it'll be free uh, for the children. Yeah, no uh, systematic, uh, restrictive, systematic structure with it. It needs to be open for the individual to choose. You know, they can be guided but not restricted, nor uh, nor it be compulsory either. Thank you. Uh, so Louise asks, but what if you have fear in ego, but the purest intentions, Rick? Will we still ascend in this now? Well, what occurs is that you had the purest intentions, but let's say you still have fear in, in ego, but let's look at fear. What if will occur, you'll have many tests, but very quickly, uh, for example, you overcome those fear tests. So just by watching this tonight and saying, then you look at anything to do with fear as a test, then you can very more quickly and efficiently rationalize, the, okay, it's a test. So then when you know that immediately, that lifts up some of the level of fear that clouds the judgment, and you're able to see and you're able to navigate through the experiences to overcome fear much quicker. Now, ego, there, there needs to be said that there is what we call or what I'll label uh, good ego and bad ego. Now, bad ego is the pompous, uh, egotistical, uh, all of the negative ones, that's the bad one you don't want, you know. But you do need the good ego because you need to look at ego as the identity. It is your energetic actions. And in, in these times, you need this good ego. And the reason why you need it, let's look at uh, humility. Let's look at humility and modesty as a scale. So, you know, you're taught long time ago and what Jesus taught, well, not fully, I, 
Okay, I won't say what Jesus fully taught. You know, it's good to be um, humble. Uh, not humble. I've I got to get my right choice of words. It's good to be modest up until a certain level. But in these times where so many of you are upon the planet to take divine leadership roles and to step into your divinity, you have to raise above that ego and say who and what you are. So someone may say that, oh, that person's ego, uh, they're egotistical, they're saying, uh, you know, there's something that they're not, but you need to own what you are, and that's so important because this is owning your power and your divinity, and by raising above the restrictions of the words modesty and humility, um, by doing that, you are further empowering your divinity, and you need to be because you're here to have a divine leadership role. And if you're going to stay under modesty and never come and to the surface and show ones, nothing ever changes there. And you need to say divinely who you are and you need to rise above that and you need to stand strong in it. So as a simple, um, uh, simple elaboration on that, if you will. And uh, yeah, for the, as I said before, ones are assured that you have your lessons in your test uh, to ascend, but it's on the individual basis for the most part. Everyone is ascending with the physical vessel intact, but there is no death is what I need to say. So, you know, if, if, if a divine one that you know passes, they don't really pass. That's not what occurs. So it just means they're just leaving that body behind what they, what they had in this dimension and they have chosen to ascend through the death process instead of taking the body that they had through the light body process and uh, uh, transcending the dimensions with uh, the physical vessel they have intact. So it, it's a soul's choice, but there's very few souls that have chosen um, uh, to lead through the death process, but there are some. Um, Lilith says, if she has a question, if you have abilities and have children, would those abilities or gifts be transferred to the child? Well, yes, of course, on whatever level it can be. And uh, especially now, you know, all of uh, mostly the moms, but even the dads, uh, you need to, what you're already doing, is looking at your children as another soul. So you take the human age factor out of the equation, and you need to look at them as a soul and you know that there's energetics going on and especially in these heightened times with the bondings especially with the moms in the children you know that unconditional love is already there that is such a strong bond but within the energetic exchange and the communication especially daily there is so many things going back and forth energetically which empowers each other and can, uh, of course, yes, you know, um, increase the abilities and turn new gifts on. So the answer to that is, is uh, a, a definitely not transferred because you both keep the gifts, but uh, a definite yes that uh, they are empowered. And, you know, on the micro scale, uh, with a mother and a child, uh, with the gifts trans not transferred but shared and uh, activated and uh, um, to each one on the micro level, this is what happens with the worldwide unity of all of the light crystalline ones as well uh, within the collective. So when you interact with others, there are 
um, uh, codes, activations that are, are shared back and forth. So there's an energetic uh, exchange going back and forth, but uh, nothing is ever, let's say, taken from one and given to another. It's actually a, I'm looking for the word to best describe this, it's actually a sharing. So if you're activated, if you're able to um, read minds, if you will, or just like coming into that contact, if it's supposed to be with the other one, then they will also be able to do it. So it's like a hundredth monkey effect as well. So you all share in it, and it keeps advancing everyone higher and higher, and the more of a collective that becomes uh, more gifted, the higher everyone keeps going up. Okay, just, uh, I keep saying this. <laughs> One more question or so, and then we're going to wrap this up. And another smoke. Well, Louise, you, you have lots of uh, good questions. So this says, what if I know someone with a beautiful heart, but because of extreme trauma, they are guarded, defensive, and project their shadows on others? It's, uh, well, with that one, how to really answer this. You know, understand that everyone is going through a journey, and if they got the beautiful heart, that means, you know, they are light, so you give them uh, the full benefit of that and know that they are going through their journey and they will pass their test as they, as they do. Uh, and, you know, they, they can project uh, their shadows, if you will, Maybe I'll use another word uh, instead of that. It, their projections upon others will be the mirror to be reflected back upon them. Um, but also, but also with that, you know, anyone that is empathic and advanced, if they feel it from another that it's being projected upon them, then that one that feels it also needs to speak the truth and let that one know what they're doing and say, you know, stop that, stop projecting that. And you're asking, <coughs> will they ascend? As I mentioned earlier, yeah, m most do, but again, it's on an individual basis. Okay, then you ask, do you reincarnate again? You know, any that's reincarnating again, once we take humanity to the fifth dimensional dimension, you'll come with a lot of your memory intact and be able to be retrieved. You will know uh, who you are because you also need to be acclimatized, you know, to the new reality which contains the higher divine knowledge. So we are in unprecedented times for humanity and nothing is going to be uh, the same. Nothing is the same now. It's that forward progression. Um, then you say, do you reincarnate again because of past karmic debt? Now at this point, Louise, there is no such thing as karmic debt. There is no such thing as karmic debt because I just let you know that you have the choice and anyone listening as an individual, you are a co-creator. So you have the choice in this now to say, no, I have no karmic debt because you are the co-creator. So you can cut that thread once you believe it enough and you are aware enough. So that's important. And in reality, 
you know, you don't want to get caught up too much in that inhibiting trick as well because you could be taken advantage of, for example, you know, some darkness will come in and, and trick and say, oh, you've got uh, karmic debt, ancestral debt, you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to take the misery and take the punishment. No, that, that is all lies and that is trickery. So there is no karmic debt. And I need to say that for any of the human souls. These are only merely tests what are happening in this lifetime and in this now to progress you forward. There is no connection to any karmic past. It's only your test and to make whatever amends you need to make now. That's enough on that subject, but thank you for bringing it up because I can... Uh, elaborate more on that at another time. Now, Patrice Walter Walker asks, what is your knowing about flat earth theory? You know, what, I, what I'd like to say about this, uh, in this reality right now, and with this ascension, does it really matter what shape the earth is? Do you, would you rather waste time searching to find proof if the world is round or the world is flat? Do you wish to spend years looking at that and looking at both sides of the debate? How far is that going to advance you forward? in your, your self-empowerment. Is it beneficial for you to know the truth? Is it beneficial for you to take a lot of time to explore uh, both beliefs? Is it beneficial? One thing I need to say is that there's many beliefs out there, and for the ones that wish to believe whatever it is, that is for them, and it can be created. But the thing is, what do you wish to create now? And is it beneficial to think it's flat or to think it's round? So this is the individual choice. You know, there is some ways that uh, you could perceive things to understand what you're doing now, but, but do not become attached to any belief that is going to limit you or distract you. You have the way forward with the self-empowerment and that is best where to keep your focus at is, is what I suggest to do with it. And, and to openly disclose, for me, the earth is spherical and that's what I love it. However, if someone thinks it's flat, that is their belief and it's quite okay to have that. It doesn't matter uh, to me. What matters to me is to see in the individuals empower their self and evolve out of this dimension whether the world is flat or not. We're going up. So if the world is round or flat, we're going up and going forward. So it doesn't matter uh, what shape it is. Thank you. Okay, just Esther says, Rick, it's getting really tough in Canada, speaking of fear. She says, now they are trying to make vaccines mandatory. Uh, can you speak to this? So far I was able to just really move beyond this category of brainwashing, but now it is getting tougher to get by. Remain in your light, in your adamant, and Remain adamant and trust Creator and know that this is all about you staying in your power and others standing in your power as well. So there's much information that is 
viral, if you will, uh, with, they called it the alternative news, but actually it's the mainstream as we know now. So uh, remain adamant and uh, it cannot be forced on ones and it's all breaking down. So it's important, you know, if you feel not to get it, don't get it. Remain adamant to put your full trust in Creator. That's what I suggest with that. Thank you. Okay. That's pretty well enough. I believe I'll wrap this up. So thank you for all of the beautiful questions and... Uh, the beautiful evening and given me uh, this opportunity to speak. So that was just great as well. So with that, what I will say is love and my mustache oh, it's gone funny. Hmm. Love, light and gratitude and unity and victory victory and lots of winks and we got this and we're getting through it very quick so until next time also I'll say uh, on on telegram uh, I do we have uh, open mic chats there and then ones can participate and, and I like that a lot better than gutting to having to read comments here as you can see then there's more of an interaction as well and of course these are for the benefit of all and uh, having said that uh, yeah all is well and all is great so that's good love and light much gratitude and have a beautiful morning day or night wherever you may be